In the Canary Islands, we're catching some surf as we find out what brings water sports enthusiasts and professionals to this captivating coastline. We'll also be chatting with champion kite surfer Mono Tobe and wing foil pioneer Gunnar Binyash, discovering why they, like many others, make their home in Fuerteventura. Nick, this is beautiful here. Whereabouts are we? Well, we're actually on the Grandes Playas, the national park of the sand dunes here, and coming into the Atlantic Ocean. Choose the spot you want. It's really, really an open playground here. We're filming in August. That's amazing. How many holiday destinations in the world would you get this kind of space to yourself this time of year? It's paradise, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Uh, it's about a 10 minute walk into town from here, so really, really close from that point of view. We have Gunnar Benyash, uh, a friend of mine, a client of Goldacre Estates. I've asked him to come down today because he is actually very well known on the island and he's actually got a lot of local knowledge as well in terms of the water sports here. Gunnar, absolute pleasure to meet you here. Uh, so, the obvious question, why Fuerteventura? I came here over 22 years ago because of my love for water sports. The north up here is a brilliant place for it. It has conditions, especially in the summer, where it's windy, it's perfect for almost all levels of kite surfers or windsurfers. And then in the winter, we have an amazing wave season. It's essentially having Maui here in Europe. <laughs> and when I'm not competing, I'm essentially training for competitions and yeah. also just also working in research and development for a lot of brands. So this is where my main spot. This is I your reach. office, basically. Yeah. I must say your office space is much better looking than Nick's. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a massive sandy beach with really nice conditions. Usually in the summer, it's nice and flat. Yeah. Um, so it's quite easy conditions for most people. And then in the winter, if you are a more advanced rider, doesn't matter what sport, we can get really nice wave conditions. We're talking about research and development. What is so great about this spot when it comes to doing your R&D? The basics of R&D are not to only test things in just one specific type of conditions. Yeah. Um, what's great about actually in the entire north of the island, within one day in the summer, you can have light wind conditions, strong wind conditions, normal wind conditions. You can have choppy water, flat water, waves and so on. So testing up here in the north is amazing for that because you save a lot of time. What you're talking about now is very, very cutting edge. I mean, hydrofoiling has been around for nigh on 30, 40 years now, but right. it's only recently in the last 15 years really started taking off with kite foiling taking off, kite foiling becoming an Olympic discipline, uh -huh. and also um, in sailing, like, like the America's Cup and so on, a lot of the boats are foiling now, so that's pushed the whole foiling side. What area does your water sports heritage come from? I actually started windsurfing when I moved here, because it's a beautiful place to windsurf. People like Nick and myself, and we're old school windsurfers, we're a bit comfortable with our gear, make us want to go wing foiling. Think of it this way, it gives you the exact same sensation as windsurfing would, yeah. but you'll have a lot more fun in less wind, plus you spend about ha less than half the time rigging up. And now that's what appeals to that me. sounds attractive to me, absolutely. Yeah. And the gear is a lot lighter to carry around. Why do you need so much less wind? The hydrofoil needs less speed. You essentially, we go from a displacement mode to a foiling mode where you're flying. But once you're flying, you don't have that resistance anymore and you're right. faster. Whereas a windsurfing board typically needs about twice the amount of wind. And with a decent amount of skill, you can get going in 10 knots quite easily. And you have more fun because you are of a lot more speed associated in that wind. And you can put it all in the back of a car. Exactly. Most normal people here, when they're riding, they got one board, two wings, one foil. That sort of flexibility is just huge in walking distance of the town. It's not so much a party destination and it's not so crowded. Yeah. It's like even in the high season here, it's still, it's fairly normal that essentially the type of tourists we have, it's just a bit more laid back. They are not so much into the, let's call it the drinking and partying scene. Yeah. You know, it's a nice, easy nightlife here. We've got a lot of bars, a lot of cafes, a lot of amazing restaurants here where people can just sit back and enjoy. You know, when I go to other places and compete like Ibiza or I just came back from Mallorca, it's a very different atmosphere. It's so much more relaxed when you come back here and it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is the life. <laughs> I really enjoy the laid back atmosphere here too, but I do wonder, is that because I'm getting old? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Would you say Fuerteventura could almost be like a, a breeding ground for a new generation of wing foilers? 
Yeah, it's amazing how, how it's actually expanded. It's just alone from this island, we have one freestyle champion in wing foiling now. I mean, we've got me with the racing champion. From the women's side, we've got two or three really good riders that have come in. And there's just more and more coming into it now. Fantastic, all, all growing up and living here yep. on the island. They're all locals that have been either born here or just <laughs> moved, been here for like almost 10 years. So it's, it's something that the kids can get into as well. Yeah, it's a very safe sport, also as a parent. Like I have no problem teaching my daughter this sport because it's like, okay, here's the gear, like if something goes wrong, just paddle back. We have wings down to like one and a half meter nowadays. It's small, <laughs> look like, it looks like an Baby umbrella. <laughs> when can we have a go already, Gunnar? <laughs> That's what we want to know. Nick and I, we need to have a wing off, don't we? Yeah, Anytime. Exactly. <laughs> Windsurfers learn it quick. <laughs> Do they? Exactly. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be interesting to see who learns it the quickest. Gunnar, wonderful to have you on the program. Thank you so much for coming on and all the best with your competing as well. Cheers, man. Thank nice you. to see you again. This is a water sports shop right next to Gold Acre Estates. And it's all about new technology. It's all about new concepts. And with me to explain it is the owner, Monotol. You yourself are a record holder, aren't you? Yeah, I used to own the speed uh, recording kiting. So that's the, that was in the early 2000, 2004, 2005. Um, I also made a record here in Fuerteventura. And the island proposes all those opportunities every day and for every level, which is pretty special to find a place in the world where you can actually every day find condition for every sport almost and every level. We have a, a rental concept, which is actually a shop where you can try before you buy all right. the latest equipment for the one that are already skilled enough. And for the beginners, we have schools. Fataventura is well known to offer all year long great weather, great conditions. I'm looking at this gear now and I'm thinking I'm, I'm really old school and I need to move forward with the time. So, so what's happening with the technology now? This is our electric foil from lift, a board, a mast, the foil here, and you can see here we have the, the engine. We actually control the engine with a little remote that you have in your hand. The battery goes in this compartment. Look at that. It's pretty uh, advanced uh, technology. Really cool. it, works so, it works really good. It's very, uh, very also user friendly. What's the power of that engine? Uh, the battery lasts for about two hours and you can go uh, about 45, 50 kilometers per hour on water. <laughs> after a couple of days practicing. <laughs> but uh, for example, if you see those big boards, yeah. so that's the boards for the beginners. Uh -huh. You can even do tandem on those boards. You can be uh, like two person on it and fly over water. It's amazing how that's all concealed, isn't it? I didn't, I didn't even notice that, that was an electric one. Yeah. And you kind of, you've got all the connections on the bottom of you, obviously you've got, exactly. you, have a, you have a mast, I assume, so that's... So the mast there and the electricity connection go through the board into the mast and, and through, the, through the engine. This is pleasant and fun to do. Because also what's very really nice is that everybody can start with this. It's not like you don't need to be especially skilled. You can learn how to foil with this. Yeah. And then when you learn how to foil with electric foil, it's a blast. It's yeah. a blast because this is an unbelievable sensation, especially for people who never did anything else on the water. I so assume this know, is really hour, popular now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like half an hour uh, tuition and you're flying. The feel of these balls, is it? It's a magic carpet. It's a sensation that uh, <laughs> it's a sensation that you you don't you yeah. never uh, actually uh, experience because it's really like there's no friction. Right. The, the the board is really above water. Yeah. So you're just flying. For the windsurfer, for example, you always need a bit of wind. Yeah. Uh, the kite a bit less and the wing folder even less. Even less. So yeah. as a windsurfer you can still uh, uh, use your gear when there's good wind yeah. but for the for the whole light wind part you right. can switch to uh, to uh, to wing fall. Fascinating tour. Uh, absolutely brilliant for someone like me who's into their water sports and interesting to see how everything's moving forward and, and Fuerteventura is really at the at the forefront of it. I mean, why, why did you set up here in Fuerteventura over anywhere else? To uh, avoid winter because uh, I was competing uh, very often here and uh, basically the, the, the climate, the ocean conditions, the, the wind, the waves, the fact that uh, you don't have much difference between winter and summer, very little, and uh, good condition all over the year so we decided to give it a try. So we stayed here for um, for six months, then we met the guys at Gold Laker and they proposed this, uh, this shop 
and we uh, right. and we were on. A bit of internal business yeah. being done. So this is how it started. <laughs> then right. I had to convince the, the the brands I was working for during my uh, my sport career to follow me on that concept of um, test center. Here we are, 15 years later, Canary Island, and especially Fuerteventura. It's the European Hawaii, and uh, this is where we have sun, waves, and wind all year long, and uh, for all all levels. So good place to live and good place to make a business for us. Now, if you want to uh, to do uh, some more content with the electric, we can do it for sure. It'd be awesome. I'd be really so interested. we could uh, yeah. we could organize a day and uh, bring me cameras. But uh, Nick, Nick has to come, otherwise uh, a long face for months here. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Got to cheer him up. Yeah, <laughs> absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you for taking sure. us around your test centre and look forward to seeing you soon. Hopefully, getting out on that electric foil. Yeah, we do that. We Perfect. get you there. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank to you. It's early August in Fuerteventura, which means world-class wind conditions for board sports. The Fuerteventura leg of the Windsurfing World Cup is in full swing, with many of the discipline's best athletes competing hard and thrilling the crowds. The setting is the southern resort of Sotovento, attracting people from all over the island and the rest of Europe. This is a spectator experience like no other. So, of course, I'm there, soaking in the atmosphere and the glorious sunshine. That was a great afternoon out. We saw some brilliant windsurfing there, people at the top of their game, and what a place to do it here in Fuerteventura. And you can just see now the lagoon has flooded. Actually, as we were watching, the, the grandstand area, which is about here on this picture, started flooding. I was, I was just thinking, would I get back without getting all the camera gear wet? Thankfully, I was able to walk around the lagoon. What a super day. What I love about this event, it puts you right in the middle of the action as well. You're sitting right in the ground, Stand. You've got the competitors around you actually talking to each other. Uh, it's a very friendly atmosphere, even though it's very competitive, obviously. Uh, everybody's looking out for each other. I'm actually parked here, right here, next to the beach, and I had a bit of a climb down that hill there, but... Uh, and I would have had a, a short swim as well <laughs> had I'd gone back the way I came, but I just went round. It's still one of my favourite events here in Fuerteventura. We hope you're enjoying Home in Fuerteventura.tv. If you are, please like, subscribe and click the notification button if you haven't already, so you're always up to date with the island. You can also share and comment to help grow and influence the channel, which we're loading up with informative Fuerteventura fun, along with our website. We look forward to welcoming you back home in Fuerteventura soon. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and adios.